just this moment. We don't want the phone number over with the internet. Okay, so let um, I I once again beg you to send me examples of mediocre writing. It doesn't have to be your writing. You could find something somewhere. I mean, you could ask a roommate, a friend, or whatever to sh to show you his or her, you know, composition from freshman English or something. Or you could find somebody who grades freshman English and or tutors freshman English and or history or whatever and. But we need, I need examples of mediocre writing. Um, if you send me something that is already nearly perfect, I mean, what are we going to do uh, with it? Yeah. In my case, I would like you to help read that paper that I sent. Yeah, 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 but that's just slightly technical, right? I mean... Um, are you better with the front lights off or on? We might want to turn them off if we're going to film it. It's hard you say to see turn them off or not turn them off? Turn them off. Turn them off. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, in the absence of examples of mediocre writing, I thought I would um, go through some stuff on parts of speech. Um, for most of you, most of this won't be terribly, won't be new at all. Um, so, um, but a little bit of it might be. In fact, some of it was new to me. Um, a noun is a person, place, or thing. Okay. A pronoun is a word that represents a noun in some way. Words, I, me, mine. Notice mine. He, him, her, his, she, her, hers, for pronouns. The words that, which, who, anything, myself, are, or can be pronouns. There's quite a wide variety here. Um, an article tells us how unique a noun is. The articles in English are a, uh, an, and the. They stand before the noun they modify. By the way, the distinction between a, an, and the is something that native speakers of English learn as very young children um, and can't explain to anybody because they learned it before they learned anything else. Um, it costs, I mean, you can't explain it. A and an are for things that aren't unique. Um, the means that you're pointing to a unique object. So the red ball that I bought for $39.27 yesterday. Um, but a ball, any old ball. Um, now, uh, the, the distinction between a uh and an, um, we also know, uh, learn instinctively as children, but um, not instinctively, but we learn it and now use it instinctively. Um, but the difference for foreign-born people um, um, is a little bit subtle. It's that um, it's a, a is used um, before a word that sound, starts with a consonant sound, and an is used for a word that starts with a vowel sound. It's not the rule is based on the sound, not on whether the first letter of the noun that follows is a consonant or a vowel. It's the sound of the word. Um, I should have put an example there, but I didn't think of it. Didn't think of one. An adjective describes a noun or a pronoun. Adjectives may precede their nouns or follow them and a form of the verb to be. So. Um, uh, Mary is tall. Um, tall is following uh, is, which is the present of the verb to be. A verb is a word that it denotes action or uh, a state of being, and I'll, I'll have a little more to say about verbs later. 
there are many, the verbs are just have many, many forms in English. An adverb is a word that describes a verb, an adjective, or an adverb. So it's, it's a, uh, I've always been amused by adverbs in that they can modify verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. And um, whereas adjectives only modify nouns um, or pronouns. Um, a conjunction, well, the conjunctions aren't really very important. They're words that join, it is a word that joins words or sentences often with the help of a comma. Examples are and, but, for, or, nor, so, yet. But other words such as that can be consumptions. He said that she was nice, for example. A preposition combines with an article and a noun to form a phrase that describes a verb, noun, pronoun, or adjective. So in the room, on the table, uh, whatever. I thought, I don't know if this is such a great idea, but I thought, uh, I, I took three sentences from the first page of War and Peace, translated, of course, into English. In fact, there's a husband-wife team who did the best translation. Pavir is the man's name. The woman's name is very long, and I don't remember it. In fact, I may not have Pavir right. Um, in any event, what I've done is I've color-coded all the words in these three sentences according to their parts of speech. Um, and so let me read you what, what is said uh, here. And I, I had to skip some stuff because, um, well, some of it's in French. When Tolstoy wrote, he wrote in French and Russian and in the Pivir translation, uh, the French is still there, and uh, the Russians translate into English. So he was wearing, an em this is a certain prince, he was wearing an embroidered court uniform, stocking shoes and stars, and had a bright expression on his flat face. He spoke that refined French in which our grandparents not only spoke, but thought, and with those quiet, patronizing intonations which are proper to a significant man who has grown old in society and at court. He went over to Anna Pavlovna, kissed her hand, presenting her with his perfumed and shining bald pate, and settled comfortably on the sofa. Um, I urge you, if you haven't read War and Peace, it's much better than the movie versions, and um, the remarkable thing is that it's so easy to read. Um, so, uh, and one of the things that I only noticed after I color coded the whole thing, this is only one adverb in the three sentences, unless I missed one, and it's comfortably. Um, uh, some people, in fact, Gore Vidal, who's most of, I find he's most amusing when he's making fun of other writers. Um, um, one of the things he criticizes in other writers, um, especially ones that he particularly hates because they've gotten more prizes than he has, um, is that they use too many adverbs or, and too many adjectives. Or it may be that he singles out adverbs. In any case, um, I was pretty amazed that, um, well, not pretty amazed, but I was surprised that there was only one adverb there. Um, so should we go through this? The, 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 the PDF of this is on the class webpage, so you can look at it at your leisure if you want to. But, um, he is a pronoun, was wearing a verb, and an article. Embroidered is um, a, a, a verb, um, a participle type of verb. A participle is a, part of, is a verb that's been modified by ed, to the addition of ed or ing or, in fact, I go on the, on the next page to talk about those. Um, the verbs have many forms. They can be active, Jack saw Mary in class, or passive, Mary was seen in class. Be, do, have, are auxiliary verbs. 
a participle is a word formed from a verb, usually by the addition of D-E-D -E -D or I-N-G. Um, um, the, when I-N-G is added, the, the thing can be um, uh, just a participle and, and it, it just, John running uh, tripped over the um, stump. Um, so running is a participle there. On the other hand, if you say John's smoking bothered other people in the room, smoking there functions as a noun, and um, a participle functioning as a noun can be called gerund. And um, and notice when I when I made that example, um, it was John's smoking. The gerund takes the possessive. So, um, Henry's drinking and drove his wife mad, um, but it's Henry's. Um, you could also say Henry drinking annoyed his wife, but that would be um, drinking there would be purely as participle, and it would mean the same thing as um, when Henry drank his wife was annoyed. Um, so, um, let's see if I go back to the this example, and I guess we can go through this thing. Um, uniform stocking shoes and stars are nouns, as is expression and face. The other nouns are French grandparents, um, um, intonations, man, society, court, pan of papola, hand, tape, and sofa. On the other hand, the verbs are was wearing, embroidered, had, spoke, refined, spoke, thought, patronizing, that's a participle, are, has grown, um, or you could say has grown old. I took old as an adjective here. Um, went, kissed, presenting, a participle here. Perfumed, that's a participle also. Actually, I wrote it as a, as an well, you can think of it as a verb participle, or you can think of it as an adjective. Shining is a participle. Settle, that's a participle also. Um, the pronouns are in blue green, he, he, uh, those, uh, which, uh, who. Um, I may have gotten two. Well, I guess two is all right. All right, who. Um, he, her, her, his, okay, so those are the pronouns. Um, the conjunctions are um, and, and, not only, but, and, 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 and. The articles, of course, are uh, there aren't very many articles here. Uh, uh, I may have missed one. The prepositions are in um, which here is a pronoun. Um, our is also a pronoun, um, as is which. Uh, to is a preposition. At, to, with is a preposition. On. And, um, so have I done them all? The adjectives are, let's look at the adjectives. Bright, flat, quiet, proper, significant, old, bold. And there aren't that many adjectives either. So does anybody want to comment? Yeah. Um, I don't think gerunds always have to be possessive or a subject of a possessive. Because you can say something like, I like running. And then running. You, oh, oh th 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 there they're just a noun, right? Yeah. What was your example? Say it again. I like running. 
Yeah, yeah, there it's just a noun. But it's a, it's a gerund. It's a gerund noun. Yeah, okay. It's okay. A, yeah, but a gerund is a participle acting as a noun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and okay, you said but if no one's possessing it, then you don't need the possessive. I know, but you said originally that it needs a possessive. It takes a possessive if it needs it. That's what it means. Okay. All right, anyway, but you're, uh, you're absolutely right. Um, John liked smoking and drinking. Um, those are both gerunds, both nouns, and um, and uh, you don't. I just wanted to emphasize the possessive part because uh, you often see um, people not use the possessive by mistake. Um, Okay, well, I'm not quite sure what to talk about now. This is essentially what I've um, uh, prepared. Well, let me just say one thing maybe about language changing. Um, I think we're, in, in America, we're in a, um, a, situ a wag the dog situation, or the tail that wags the dog. The tail here is England, America's the dog. Obviously, we're a much larger country, 330 million people, and England is, I don't know, 60 million or something. And in, moreover, in England, you have a very much a class society. You have the royals, the aristoc aristocracy, then you have the upper class, the middle class, the lower class, and then you have regions with a wide variety of accents, and the, the people who... <coughs> count as far as uh, the, the, this is the people who are really imitated, who set the standard for the English language, are a tiny group of people um, who form the, the royals, the aristocracy, and the upper class from the region that has the right accent. And so this is a very small group of people. It might be a million people. And when you have a small group of people, um, language can change in a small group very rapidly. And then you have um, Americans imitating um, the, uh, these upper class English people. And so, every, so I sometimes get the impression that every time an aristocrat in England makes a mistake, the language changes. And um, pretty soon media people in the United States start imitating this mistake, and then pretty soon it becomes uh, a common usage in the United States, and it's it's in my view kind of unfortunate. Yeah. If you're saying that the United States imitates English, then why don't Americans speak with British accent? Then? Well, it's it's very hard to change one's accent. Children learn their accent when they're from other children. Um, time they're five years old. And most of the children there around are other American children from the neighborhood, so, yeah. One interesting thing that like, some of my uh, linguistics friends have kind of talked about is like America in the past decade slash century has had like a really diverse spectrum of accents and local dialects, but it's actually starting to homogenize a bit. In America, or, in America, or in England, to, or both? Uh, general, just focusing on the U.S. and it's kind of like centralizing on Midwestern slash Western American accents. Oh, really? Like I was hoping it would be Eastern. I'm from New York City. <laughs> I've got some. I've got some friends. I, I have a friend from New York, and she doesn't have a New York accent at all. And she's she's from the city. It's and like. She, she puts a conscious effort into not having an accent, which is odd to me. I, I don't put any effort into anything. In. And several of my friends from Texas don't have a distinguishable accent. Is well, well, I, I think that what you're saying is, is true. And the reason, though, is mass media. In other words, television. So kids watch television, and their accents are affected uh, when they're quite young. And so. And uh, I think television came to the U.S. before it came to England, 
and um, uh, so it might just be a different role in media plays too in the U.S. that influences it so much. Well, we probably watch more television than the English do. Um, anyway, um, you're, you're perfectly right that the accents have homogenized, which I think is a good thing because then we can understand each other more easily. Um, Anyway, um, let's see, did, oh, oh, you guys have I made comments or anybody else? Oh, you. Like, if we, if we, uh, what? If we, if we put, like, War and Peace into Google. Well, I, I think, say, say it again. If we put War and Peace into Google. If you have to put it in like Google Translate, and like if we if we put Google if we put War and Peace into Google Translate, and like did or did you know switched it to physical English, would that would there be any like like changes from the other translations? Well, I imagine that um, that. The team that I mentioned, who Kabir and his wife, who translated War and Peace, they did a, a better job than Google Translate could do. Um, I don't, I don't know if I told you this. I I'll say it again because it's very brief. That um, part of the training of the computers in Google Translate was to feed the computers the the. Um, congressional record from Canada, which is in both French and English. And so the computers just compared the French with the English and were able to translate in both, learn something about how to translate in both directions. Um, any other comments? Let's see, you have a laptop open. I do. Can you find something of? I'm actually trying, but the internet's You're not trying working. to find some mediocre mm -hmm. writing? Oh. I s emailed something in. I don't know if you got it, though. Well, did it, oh, all right, I didn't notice it. When did it come? Like, some point today. I don't remember when. I sent it earlier today at like three something. What was in the title? It was it was physics four hundred. Are you Christine Bennett? Yeah. Okay, it's a PDF. Mm -hmm. I wonder if I have mail on this computer. Now, is this mediocre writing or is this pretty good writing? I don't know. I wrote it, so it's probably bad. Did you write it carefully or did you write it when you were, did you write it without even thinking? I kind of just wrote it and sent it in. I mean, I had him read it to make sure it wasn't super good or super bad. So, like, All right, so yeah. let me, um, I've got it here. I don't see how I can put it on. Is the sharing open on the computer? Well, uh, come here, if you know how to do that. Um, I We could just disconnect mine and connect yours to the. To the why don't Why don't you bring your laptop up here? Okay.
Well, it's in mail, yeah. Do you want to go from there? Mm -hmm. Now I turn airdrop on that. You turn that on, you could be able to just send whatever file. This is airdrop oh. here. Yeah. Uh, for the iPhone, you go to six. Yeah, all right. Let's let, let, let's let's disconnect me and. and okay. Open shell documents. Okay. Now, what? Why don't you connect the thing? Do you, do you have HDMI? That looks like HDMI right there. There it is. Okay, and um, so let's see. This is yeah. Windows or something. This is. Uh, Windows I mean, HP the operating system is Windows. <laughs> yeah, huh? it's okay, so <laughs> let's let's make it bigger so everybody can see. <laughs> right, that's good. And can we make it full screen without all this junk on the top? Okay, that's pretty. Good. That's good enough. We don't. It doesn't have to. Be good. Thanks. Okay. All right. So let let me shoot. Um, let let us all collectively try to uh, fix this. There has been something magical happening right overhead, but mm -hmm. until the 1990s, it was only a tale told by pilots and storm watchers. For years, there were reports of strange lights moving from storm clouds and into space, these lights have been said to mess with aircraft equipment and travel in shapes and colors not made by everyday lightning. It's led to many different theories from the public, which include the pilots, which include that the pilots are just seeing things, mechanical issues, and of course aliens. However, it was, I think you want to say it was not. It was not until the International yeah. Space Station ISS got a photo of one of these strange events that scientists began to try and understand the meteorological phenomena now known as sprites. I would have. I would have said to try to understand. Oh, I would have said to try to understand. Yeah. It's, I think that that's a, um, let me try to get rid of this thing here. Oh, um, this thing's All not right. to understand. Okay, uh, in scientific, so I mean this is too well written for me to f correct it apart from and going to two, yeah. T-O. And leaving off the you want to, Anybody else want to fix something? It was just a little thing, like the verb tenses. So, like, this led to many uh, different theories from the public, which include. Wait, 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 here, use this. All right, here, this led to many different theories from the public, which include it should be included, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I think that's easy, like, an easy mistake to make when you're just writing it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, but you know, once the theory was formed, it still exists, so you could use the present. Well, they've kind of I mean, part. The I don't think it's a mistake. What? Well, the theory's not really around anymore. Like, uh, it, it could, it, maybe it could go either way. But the consistency with the verb. One could have said this led to many different theories from the public, such as that the pilots were seeing things. Although I think maybe it's better the way it's written, but you know, if you want to go with included, that's fine. Okay, so in scientific terms, you can describe sprites as a rare form of lightning that only comes from the top of extremely severe. All right, so we need either thunderstorms or a uh, an extreme uh, top of an extremely severe thunderstorm that stretches up to the ionosphere um, their unique color comes from the ions smashing together which is also how they get whoa 
a screensaver. <laughs> shapes of sprites, jellyfish, column, and carrot. The jellyfish, okay, you gotta decide, is it one word or two? Um, I would Google it, um, probably both are correct, but I kind of think jellyfish might be better. Anyway, the jellyfish is a circular, somebody wanna look that up? Just Google jellyfish. The jellyfish is a circular <laughs> orb of light. I'm not quite sure what an orb is. Or, is orb really a word? And yeah. Orb? yeah. It's like a it's circular a circle. object. It's like a ball. It's like yeah. part of orbit. So you mean a kind circle? Kind of yeah. kind of like an it's, it's a sphere. Yeah, it's a sphere. Like a sphere? Like a sphere? Yeah. yeah. Maybe part of orbit. But well, why not say <laughs> a circular ball is you know, rather than use a word that's confusing. Jellyfish should be one word. Alright. Circular ball of light with several trails following it. Oh, I see. So it does look like a jellyfish. Um, the column appears to be just a tube of light stretching up into the ionosphere. Finally, well, you want that to be a lowercase t. Yeah. Uh, the carrot is a mix of a column and a jellyfish shape with a long cylindrical body and trails behind it. Since their discovery, and thanks to the fast evolution of technology, sprites have started to become well documented by scientists around the globe. Though since they are still considered a new discovery, we don't know that much about them. Um, okay, well you don't want this comma for sure. Um, and is it good to write like uh, those phrasal words, like those things together? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand. Say it again. Is it good to write like those things, like those kind of things together? Yeah, I wouldn't have written that. Um, I mean, obviously you can condense this last sentence to something like, um, however, since they are so new, we don't, we still don't know much, we still don't know much about sprites. Um, that much, I don't, you know, is, is sort of slang. And both since is a little crowded, and uh, so I, I would change that last sentence. The trouble is, though, this is still too well written for me to do much with it. Um, um, we need something that's at least as bad as the paragraph I took out of the biophysics book, um, and preferably worse. Um, I don't know. Maybe you guys just are two good writers, so the. No, I'm just think? wondering, like, uh, here. The choice of commas, like, I see. Uh, well, yeah, you don't want this comma for sure. Yeah, and, like, there is somebody else here to, like, smash it together. Do you need, do you need comma here? Like, because we are. Well, that thing with we, it's, so. commas are so small that. People don't, you can get away with doing almost anything with commas. Can you wiggle the mouse? What do I do? Just wiggle the mouse pad. Okay. Uh -oh. And then I'm what? Wiggle again? No, I'm designed by next. Okay, anyway, I owe you a candy. Is that it? All right, we've only got two left. Um, Let's see, I have to give another one to the videographer. So there's only one question left. So where were we? We were talking about the commas. The position of yeah, as I was saying, commas are really, really... I mean, mistakes with commas, unless they're 
egregious are always forgiven. Um, for example, I was taught that, um, in fact, what I was taught was, uh, let's see, if you have a conjunction with and anywhere here, uh, anyway, I was taught that if you have a, um, John went down to the uh, water, comma, and there he saw some fish. Um, I was taught to put a comma before the and because uh, and there he saw a fish is a complete sentence. What follows and is a complete sentence and so one should have a comma before the and. However, um, I'm reading a book now by Steve Cole who's a I think Pulitzer Prize winning writer, perhaps a reporter from the New York Times or somewhere else. Um, anyway, a highly respected writer, and uh, he never uses a comma in that case. So commas are, the rules for commas are, um, are um, very flexible. One rule that might be the best one to follow is to say the sentence out loud, and if <laughs> if you hear a pause, then um, put in a comma. And if you don't hear a pause, don't put in a comma. The advantage of that rule is that it covers everything. And the alternative to that is a whole bunch of rules, which, as I said, many many of them have fallen into disuse. And so, um, uh, so that that rule may be the best one. That reminds me of a story about a, a bear who went into a bar and ordered uh, went into a bar, and the bartender said to him, uh, "What'll it be?" And the bear said, um, "Give me a gin." And tonic, and the bartender said, "What's with the big pause?" Um, bears have, of course, big pause. So, Sam sent me another article that he found. Yeah. Um, sure. I, wait. Yeah. Can I say something? Yeah. I might be more That's the same one. That's yours. Yeah. He has yeah. something to yeah. say about this. I would probably defend that comma in terms of this, like, with, without restructuring the sentence, I think. Yeah, I, I would agree. I would go with that comma. I would keep that comma also. It, it makes it flow. It, like, it would be a really long-winded sentence. In fact, some pe one of the rules of commas, as I said, the the, the One of the rules for commas is, if you're going to use which, put a comma in. If you don't need the comma, then this should be a that. Okay. Um, One spot where he did kind of spot mm -hmm. an unnecessary comma or two was right up here. There's like four commas in the span of. Five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would. Uh, I would. Try to get rid of I, those things. I'm a really comma heavy writer, so. Okay. <laughs> okay, but so you said one, he sent you a new text? Yeah, uh, sent it. That one in person. Oh, he yeah. sent you a new text. Okay, great. Let's put up the new text. While, while you're doing that, let me just mention something about that and which. Not having to do with commas. It's whether you should use that or which. And um, the, the, the children's uh, uh, story. Uh, that goes something like, this is the house that Jack built. Okay. It's not, this is the house which Jack built. And the reason is that that is pointing to a particular house that's already been defined. On the other hand, um, so that's why it's, this is the house that Jack built, but, um, uh, uh, Jack saw a house on the corner 
which he sort of liked. Well, I don't know. Maybe whether the witch is right there. I don't know. Um, I sh I'll, I'll try to get 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 some examples of that in which. Um, or, uh, all right. He, here here's an example. Hey Sam, I think you sent me the wrong one. Sure. Yeah. Possibly, I can't. Possibly. Okay. You know, you use that when the, the when the, the in other words, the pronoun or relative pronoun that is point, points to a particular thing, whereas which you use when the pointing is much vaguer. All right, I, I think the best thing is for me to cook up some good examples and show them to you. But, by the way, you know, I said um, send me some examples of mediocre writing and I suggested paragraphs. We don't need paragraphs. In fact, what would be a, a lot easier to handle would be just sentences. So mediocre sentences, they're easier to find than paragraphs. and. In fact, um, they're also easier to correct because in a paragraph, you might have a paragraph in which there are five sentences, three of which are perfect or, hard, or don't have any glaring mistakes. Um, so, and, so if you send them to me, please send them as, the easiest is just send them as either ASCII text, in other words, in a mail message, or a doc file or a PDF, but something I can mouse into another document, which will be, is a LaTeX thing that I've been working on. And also in the in the message, the mail message, please put uh, Physics 400, or even better, Physics 400-18, or no, Physics, what is it? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, or Physics 4, put 400 in the for sure 400. If you want, we could say yeah. mine's all next time. I mean, yeah. All right, we're good. Well, send it to me. Send send both of these to me, why don't you? And we can. Oh, no. Right. The thing didn't show up. What thing didn't show up? There's uh, some special character that didn't show up. Oh. All right, let, let me <coughs> grab this and try to. Can we make it bigger? Yeah, there we go. It doesn't seem to be very clear. Oh, the... That might be my laptop. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, uh, for God's sakes, if you're going to send me something, don't send a, a bitmap. Uh, what is it? A photo. Send, um, as I said, PDF or... Signification in and of itself cannot be represented because there is nothing that represents what is signified. Good God. <laughs> Each time we use the word for itself, we must always relate it to another object, idea, or thing that exists in the world, or at the very least, something that we have a conception of. This is due to our understanding of the binary logical pair, namely P and not P. P and not P? Not Where we understand that there is an object, whether it be a statement, idea, a thing that exists in the world, that it's easy for us to conceive of. Okay, I'm, um, I don't know. Uh, something else, you know, when I ask for s s samples of mediocre writing, I'm, I would prefer that they not be overly technical. Yeah. Um, it's study. All right, this first sentence, it certainly doesn't mean anything to me. So I would say it's not very clear. Um, 
Uh, for one thing, one of Orwell's rules is to avoid negatives. So it's much better to say, um, to say what signification, signification is rather than what it isn't, um, or, or, or how it, well anyway, something positive about it rather than something negative. Now, and the word, is the word signification? Each time, each time so, we yeah. use the word, what word? Is it signification? I think so, yeah. yeah. All right, so I would have said each time we use the word signification, and by the way, when you're using the word, it's um, conventional to put it in italics <laughs> to mean that it's the word rather than um, a word that's playing a functional role in the sentence. Uh, well, this sentence, this is due to our understanding of the bio of the I, I don't think this sentence is particularly meaningful. Um, it strikes me as being, um, all right, so that sentence needs some work there. Um, okay, and also, if we, where we understand that there is an object, um, you don't want a semicolon, maybe a dash, okay. whether it be a statement, idea, or thing that exists in the world that is easy. For ourselves to conceive of as not existing. Yeah, this is pretty weird. Uh, I don't know. I'm so, I must say, I'm glad I didn't go into philosophy. Um, yeah, I, I I wrote this in like 30 minutes. <laughs> so yeah, I, I also see like the starting seems like more complex. It seems like more complex in its yeah. So let, let's have writing that's. Um, that's that's not so technical because um, you know if you put up something technical and I don't understand what the technical background is then I have trouble fixing it. All right, I think we're sort of out of time. So unless somebody has a question, um, here you you probably have earned another one. You got your second, didn't you? Okay. All right, so let's let's just sit for a moment then. Go for the week. Hey John, can you press the button for the recording?